here for a long time. <laughs> As, again, my name is Dennis Bossier. I'll be talking about um, building and selling WordPress themes, but I feel like Sam's already talked about building themes quite a bit. So I'm not gonna get any tech, uh, technical with that stuff. I'm just gonna talk about the business aspect of it. Um, yeah, so let's go, let's do this. Uh, that's just my introduction. I'm gonna just try and make it like real short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> See how far I can get with this. All right, so um, I've been a web developer since 2008. Well, to be honest, back then I was just playing with code. I wasn't really doing anything important. I started building themes in two 2014, and I started selling themes in 2016. You can see there's a two-year gap there, and uh, that was a really difficult time for me. I really suffered a lot trying to get my themes on Team Forest and whatnot. Uh, they, still doesn't they still haven't let me in. So <laughs> uh, generally, this is all a story of passion and persistence. Uh, to be honest, where I've gotten it's all through that, uh, being passionate about what you do and being constantly just persistent because I'm very lazy. So those two things have really helped me out. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, I'm going to talk about building the WordPress team. I'm just going to try to make this very short. So the first thing you need to do is really just research and choose your niche because what you don't want to do is build a thing that nobody wants, right? Yeah, so uh, you do your research, go on Team Forest, do everything else, ask people what they want to see, and then build that. I'll try and tell you to really avoid building multi-purpose themes. I know my friend Frank here will disagree with me, but try not to build a theme that does everything. Okay, so try to build a theme that is very focused on one thing. So if you're if it's a real estate theme, build that. If it's a portfolio theme, build that. Even make it more focused. It's a portfolio theme for photographers, all right? It's a lot easier to market that. It's a lot easier to build that than trying to build a theme just does everything like a see something knife kind of thing. You're most likely going to mess up with the code or something when you're doing that. Uh, the next thing is uh, just use a starter theme like the underscore asked by automatic. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. You know, um, use the starter theme that's already there. It saves you tons of hours. To be honest, um, I use it for every project. Uh, if you're interested in all that DevOps stuff, if you want SaaS and Gulp in it and whatnot, comes with options for that as well. Um, the other thing is just follow WordPress coding standards. <coughs> all right, they're pretty easy. They're all up there. There's there are no secrets or anything. There's not like a secret committee of guys who say um, you have to do your theme a certain way. So just follow the standards. Just make sure your, your theme is, sec is secure. <coughs> do things like escaping strings, sanitizing uh, inputs and whatnot. So for you developers, pretty much understand what I'm talking about. Uh, do internal internalization. I know somebody's talked about translation and whatnot. Make sure you do that because um, you find that your theme's not just gonna be used by English speaking um, users, right? I, I think probably like about a third of my themes is used by like Spanish guys. So if I, d if I never made them translatable, uh, that's a very big part of the world like I would have left out. And just make sure your code is clean. That the other thing is also make it simple to use. I know this sounds like really easy to do, but a lot of team developers fall short when it comes to this. If any of you ever gone to Team Forest, right, and you see one of those really beautiful themes and you're like, yeah, I want this, then you download it and install it and you're just like, what the fuck are they doing with this code, you know? It's so complicated in the back end that I personally sometimes find it difficult to install. And I build themes. So imagine other what, what other people are gonna go through, you know what I mean? So make it very simple to use. This is also gonna save your ass a lot later. Um, another slide that's coming up. So um, yeah, <laughs> see this, all right? So the other thing is about distribution. So use channels that are already there, like WordPress.org or ThemeForest. Um, ThemeForest, you're familiar with ThemeForest, right? So the good thing about ThemeForest, you can get reach like really, really fast. Like you can start bowling like the next day, right? But chances of that happening is really small. Like, do anybody know the most popular theme on Team, on team Forest? Avada? Avada. Yeah, Avada. Anybody knows about how much is sold? 460,000 copies, right? It's made about $22 million. This one theme has made about 2 billion shillings. Yeah, from a theme. 
you'd really be bowling that Lamborghini if you did that. But chances are you're not going to get that <laughs> shot of light, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be standing here if I was doing that. Nah, uh -uh. right? Be building my own roads. It was me, like, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a great avenue, it's a great thing, it's a great distribution channel and everything. But remember my first slide I showed you, I started building themes 2014 and I started selling them 2016. Those two years were lost in Team Forest. All right? Those guys just wouldn't let me in the club. Maybe I wasn't, too, I wasn't cool enough for them. Well, yeah. Uh, I've got a friend of mine here who actually sells themes on Team Forest, but he can tell you how much rejection he gets. It's constant. And he's one of the best developers I know, fact, probably the best developer I know. And he still gets rejected. So if you're just starting off now, uh, I'd save you the, you know, the time and the worries and sleepless nights. To just go on WordPress.org. So the other thing about WordPress.org, you give it away for free, all right? So you get a few eyeballs here and there. You get downloads and stuff. Um, I distribute all my themes on WordPress.org. So they are free. And I think right now I have about maybe half a million downloads on that. Like that's like in last uh, year and a half or something like that, probably more. Um, you see, you get a lot of users there. So I, I don't do a lot of marketing. I'm not good at that, at that stuff. I hardly tweet about my own themes there. So WordPress.org is giving me an avenue where I can just give up my themes for free and everybody enjoys them and whatnot. Then the other thing is now you sell premium features. So I give away the theme for free. Oh, that's all yours. But if you want all the premium features, you gotta give me some part of your money, you know, like go reach into your pockets and get something back. And like uh, Moko is selling, gives out his free plugins. Uh, well, we're just not cut from the same cloth, I guess. <laughs> no, so I need to make my money somehow. So I sell premium plugins. Um, also, Sam talked about how you, you need to choose a theme that's just focusing on the looks and you leave the functionality to the plugins. And that's exactly what I do because I don't want when users change over for my themes, they lose the data. So that's why every functionality you have is uh, um, on the plugins. Right. So um, what I do is I sell on my own site. As I said, I'm still not cool enough to get into Theme Forest. So all I have to do is build my own website and set it up. And that's where I sell my stuff from. Um, I use a plugin called Easy Digital Downloads. I know everybody here is WooCommerce, WooWoo and everything, but I uh, no, it's not mine. I don't like that, that plugin that much because it's great for selling physical products. It really sucks for selling digital products. Uh, I might be wrong. Don't kill me on this, but <laughs> I don't use it. So Easy Digital Downloads, what they did was they took the same concept as WooCommerce and built a plugin that just focuses on selling digital products. right? So obviously, they do that better than WooCommerce because WooCommerce is just trying to you know, try to sell everything. Um, you can also use something like PayPal or credit card for checkout. Uh, PayPal has become very common in Kenya right now. I know you can like withdraw your funds to MPS in like two hours, can withdraw it to equity and whatnot. So Easy Digital Downloads actually gives you a free plugin for PayPal for integration. Um, if you're thinking about maybe getting an MPS uh, checkout for this, maybe talk to Moko about it, but I doubt he's going to make it for Easy Digital Downloads. Um, the other thing is pricing. Uh, it's a bit trivial because you're building your own software, right? And you're like, oh, this, this thing took me like two months. How much should I sell it for? You want to sell it for, obviously, you want to sell it for like $1,000, but nobody's going to buy that stuff. So what you need to do is also do research and check out the pricing and whatnot. What you don't want to do is price it too low. So you don't want to sell your themes or plugins for like $1.99, right? Because with $1.99, you're going to get $1.99 clients. I mean, those are shit clients, to be honest. They're really going to push you and make your life a living hell, all right? So all the other thing is you don't want to sell it too high because nobody's going to buy that. So you try and look for, like, um, you know, a balance. So I sell my plugins between $39 and $49. It's pretty reasonable, I guess. Um, also realize, like, low pricing attracts students. And students, I mean, even guys who are learning how to code and stuff, uh, bloggers and DIY guys. So the one thing all these guys have in common, they're really not technical people. So they're always going to need support, all right? And support is the next thing I'm going to talk about. So um, funny thing is, if anybody here runs a um, software business, 
No? Oh, God, I'm alone. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm still going to talk about it anyways. Funny thing about running a software business is most of it is not, does not involve writing code. And you realize this. That's why it's called a business. There's the business part of it, and that's, that's the most important part of it. So for me, when I'm building my themes and I'm selling my themes and whatnot, I realize majority of my work, about 80% of it is support. Okay? So it's me sitting down and just replying back to guys and um, telling them what to do and what not to do. A lot of guys who download your themes, they don't even know what's happening. Like um, yesterday, I had a guy who downloaded a theme and we're like, oh, your software is not working. I want a refund. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I didn't even install WordPress. All right? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you get those guys. Uh, you get a guy who double clicks on it and go like, it's not running. And you're like, ah, oh. <laughs> oh, god damn it. All right? Um, so, that, so what I did was create a doc documentation, very well written doc documentation that anybody can follow. Very, very simple. So even if you're not technical at all, you go into my documentation, you download my theme, you'll be able to set it up. Uh, doing a video is a plus. I found like doing videos is actually a lot, lot better than just writing. People really don't like reading. Like, that's what I found out. Like, the people really don't like reading. Uh, you write the best documentation in the world, and they'll always constantly ask you for the same questions. Yeah. And then the other thing is, be accessible on the forums. Like on my side, I've got like a little chat thing that pops up when I'm around, so I'm quite accessible when it comes to that and try to help people out. Uh, yeah, I think I already talked about the other one. Also, remember that support during support, this is your only opportunity for you to interact with your users, right? So all the improvements I've made, all the updates I make for my, my themes and plugins always comes from suggestions from users. But the other thing is also try not to um, code in every feature they ask for, because then you're just gonna end up with this mon monstrosity of code that nobody else wants to use. So be a bit picky quite, quite a lot of times. Right, so um, the last bit is marketing and um, affiliates. So if you're not technical, but you still want to sell themes, you know? Um, it's not like uh, only tech guys can sell themes now anymore. So what you can do is you can either set up an affiliate marketing site. So if you're writing something about WordPress and whatnot, and you're doing marketing, uh, your SEO and whatnot, get affiliate links back to it. Um, for instance, for my site, I give away like 35% for every sale you make. So you take a link and you blog about it or write a review, but every user is sent back to my site and they make a purchase and you're gonna get 35% of it, right? So we all get to it, that's great. Um, so the other thing you can do is sell other people's themes on your website. Um, I guess it's what I've just talked about. Uh, do marketing for theme developers. Um, I said initially I really do suck at marketing. Like I, I, I don't know where to start from, right? I had, um, no ashamed to say I really don't know how to do it, right? So um, we get other people like, there's a guy, actually he's not here today, but he's, he's the one who's gonna be working on my ACO from next week, I think, and I'll uh, see where it goes from there. Then the other thing is, I do neither of these things, right? So this is a one slide, I will just cut it short from here, and uh, instead of going on and on and bullshit everybody about what I know about marketing and I don't know it, all right? So, uh, Right, any questions? <laughs>